Hello, I am Potomi. Today, I challenge myself to do something I always wanted to do, so in this video, I will be recreating Bloodborne in Minecraft. To give you a bit of insight of what to look forward to, so far in this project, I'm planning to remake Yarnum, Cathedral Ward, and Old Yarnum, with of course original and unused areas. I have lots of ideas planned for this world, including gameplay, boss battle, trick weapons, and so much. I even be including Hunter Attire too, so you can really immerse yourself into this world. The purpose of this project was not only to express my love towards gothic architecture, but also to expand the influence of Bloodborne and challenge myself. So far it's been about two months since I've started this project, which I'm working on this completely alone and that it could take a while, so your support is really appreciated. Thank you so much. I want to mention that I'm actually looking for people who are interested in developing this project with me. The wanted category will be listed like this. So if you're down for it, send me a DM. Let's do this. And if you want to get the world download once the project is complete, then make sure you subscribe. It's free and you'll love the content I make. Also, you can get the alpha version which will be released on my Patreon. So if you want to get your hands on it ASAP, go check it out. It is already getting long, so today we will be seeing the workflow of how this was made. So, for start, I began making the bridge that leads to the first boss area. I focused on the game and my original design while keeping its shaping relative on 1 to 1 scale. I made the balusters with plain glass, but as you can see, I've changed models in the later version which made them look deformed. But worry not, it's going to be replaced by my future self, so, well that's a relief. Anyways, after getting that part done, I made the statues but for now it's a temporal placement since I'll be using custom models during the work. Along finishing the base part and making the stairs, I started building a foundation that connects to the bridge. Over here, you can see that I've moved the structure 20 blocks higher. This is because I'll need the sewers under and inside the bridge in a bit. After some adding some elements, I then duplicate the bridge to hold the bottom part while maintaining its way of detail. And after a while, I decide to start getting to the sewers by creating this archway. With the exterior temporarily finished, I began decorating and smoothing out the interior. Having to focus on the length of the cornice, I was able to divide sections by placing in pilasters. From that, I made the arch drains to finish the detailing. Along extending the higher platform, I wanted to finish the entrance of the sewers before I move on. Again, this is also a temporal polish, which I'm going to come back later. After a while, I needed a visual scale of the section for the city, so I began placing in the bridge along roughly making the shapes of the structure that stands high above the bridge. With that section in hold, to be sure that the entire scale will line up, I placed in the bridge while changing lots of its parts so that it will hold the entire thing. This will be the great bridge so that I can understand the spacing when building the houses. During this, my focus when building is not to overly complicate shapes and design, so for that, I built with a more simplistic mind by making the design more similar to the original Bloodborne. Oh yes, I also made the pane glass for the iron bars and for the street lamps, which when added, created this neat atmosphere of a gothic theme, and I love how it came out back then. Anyways, moving on to the next area, Yosefka's clinic. Same with the others, I started off roughly making the base shape, then soon after I got into detailing. I had my caution when making the lamps, interconnected fences, and walls that surrounds the clinic. This is because it will affect the entire level on even having one block mispositioned, because that will times the amount of space of distance that I've made here. Since I'll need the iron bars for the stairs, I made some using the trapdoor method, which contains a ton of conditions to render a model. And to finish up the foundation, I used my edited bridge and polished the surface to finish it up. From here, before getting into structure building, again to prevent one-on-one -on -one scale issues, I needed to fix the XYZ scaling of the level, so I toned down the overall height and extended the length of the bridge. I also made new models that I wanted for the lamps using the block state files. It took a moment, but I managed to understand how Java's resource pack works and was able to make more from here. 
So moving on to the next step, I started building the clock house. By using the custom block models, I was able to create shapes of the windows and the clock itself to get the similar look of the original one. After the clock house, I started building the base platform where the hunters uses the ladder to find their very first lamp. Right below the platform, I used the models to recreate the general appearance of the house and from that, I finished off the layered roofs, windows, and spires. Here is where I started to get more into modeling and build positioning. Since this is Minecraft, to modify or transform builds in a more efficient way, I made an asset area to keep track of what structures and how many variants there are. To get the scaling of what I want to build, I first roughly build the map, then after getting the right scale I want, I will bring the structure to a different location to finish off polishing. I usually do this a lot to make less mistakes and it saves a ton of time. After tidying up the area level, I started to place the structures in, starting with the clock house and others, with the staircase and the platform in between to smooth out the gaps. In Yarnum, this area is another route to the first lamp and it's a very unique level design which blew my mind when I first noticed. I soon after got right into this building. With a ton of pointed arch windows and the mountainous spires at the very top, this was my most favorite one. Not only that the huge windows stand out, but also the tall sharp spires, what makes the entire city feel critical and intimidating, which makes the structure stand out the most. This is a little view of how I tidied up the area by matching the balustrade's length and building widely. After a bit, I moved on to getting the layouts of the entire part, along tackling into the next structure. After doing some level adjustments, I got into changing a little of the bridge design, but I'll explain this later on. Anywho, I placed the spire build, tidied up the area, and that's it. Moving on to the next part. I worked on the relative shape of the house with custom models while having the roof heights low in variance. Ultimately, I kept the build simple like in the actual game. I think I nailed the structure pretty good despite it being Minecraft. The overall height and the scale along with the design just looks so good. Also, to share it, here's a comparison of how it looks in Bloodborne. Okay, going back to the building, here you can see how I started off with a rectangular box, then added a layer of flesh to visualize how this structure will fit in. After that, I moved it to the asset area to finish up the build by adding the necessary components, then wrapped it up with an entrance. Moving on to the next one, I really like this building. It has this compact design while keeping its city building vibe all together. The tall windows, the interconnected pillars, and the login makes this structure feel like it's connected with other buildings. It came out beautiful and I'm glad I'm able to have this experience. Along finishing sections by sections, I wanted to fill in the openings with this one. I already got the scale from the map, so I immediately got into detailing, starting from the middle to the bottom part. After placing it in, I also did a quick decorating for the walls to finish the process. I needed to be able to connect the shortcut to the bridge, so I started to make the staircase. Since this is a slab staircase, to go even more in depth and accurate, I decided to make a new type of iron bars to sustain the smoothness of the railing. Apart from the others, after placing in one of the house and finishing the modeling, I got into work. Using the models, I began building from the bottom, then gradually detailed the middle section. I also used the stairs to make the arch look fitting with the cornice, then finished it up with the rooftop. I didn't know how the background builds looked, so I got into the map viewer to see how they made theirs. And after checking how many windows position and the overall balance, I got into building. Since I made my models for the other build previously, I was able to build without stopping in the middle. And hell, that saved a lot of time. 
Anyways, after feeling good with how it looks, I place in the map for the finish, with some additional asset placing. I needed to add some components to be able to place this building in the clinic. Therefore, I moved the build and attached the other roofing parts and did a polishing to complete it. Here, you can see me placing the build along with other ones. Building Yosefka's clinic was an amazing experience. Compared with the other part of the city, this one, while having the secureness surrounded by walls, it also felt somewhat ominous, with the tight walkways and the gloomy trees. Rounded windows and the pillars that support the cornice, with the balusters on top, was a great topping. I also realized that the concept art of Yosefka's clinic had a different approach towards its design compared with the actual game version. Anyways, after readjusting the position of the build, I decided to spread the back part of the clinic by adding more walls and stairs to decrease the height of the level while also working on the main walkway for the interior. To finish off the shortcut area, I tackled into the next build. This one has a loggia with spires on each corner, which I was eager to get into since I haven't made the structure yet. Anyways, after making the metal section, I also worked on the top and bottom to finish up the build. Here, I realized that I needed to build on the opposite level to get into the next stage, so I got right into work. I started off removing the balusters, then added a small space to get the stairs going. At the end of the staircase, I stretched the platform, then made a turning point with another one. Along adding that, I stacked the platform by using the iron fences. I was able to shape the level. After adding all the polishing and readjustments, I placed in the structures to finish the work. This structure has a rule which keeps tall towers feel exposed while also making itself the same with others with its tall steeple. You can also see it placed in this location as well. I also learned that when building, placing big and tall structures very low while keeping its player on a much higher level makes us feel that the city is massive and they're at a high point of the city area. This makes the world and yourself emerge well and while possibly also works as a boundary that deals with heights and depths for leveling. Anywho, going back to the planning. To study the structure in more detail, I got into the map viewer. After repositioning the building, I noticed that the overall design was pretty weird. Some parts didn't have any pinnacle and some did along having an unbalanced proportion. But it also seemed to have some interesting elements altogether including the pointed arches, the window in the middle, and the tall spires at each corner at the bottom, middle section, and the top. After a decent amount of study, I got into Minecraft to build it. I started off doing the layouts to know how tall it would get. With feeling good how it looks, I began making the steeple while gradually working on the Wimperg which acts as a decorative gable like element in this case. Working towards the bottom part, instead of how Bloodborne did with theirs, I added the pinnacles on all faces and made it balanced in shape. After making the components, I finished the build with a flip based. Going back to the Great Bridge, I wanted to recreate the pinnacles, which are these. So after doing some spectating, I got into block bench to start modeling. I started off making the exterior grid and the stained glass. After numerous testing, I then made two more models to complete the entire shape, including the crockets, finials, and the trefoil. After spending about two hours, I felt really good with how it looked and then proceeded to place it in the map. The shape, scale, design, and the overall loftiness was the most part of the pinnacle. I absolutely love how it came out. With the overall shape of the bridge finished, I made a connection towards the lower level by making a staircase. I soon then placed in the builds in between while also extending the platform with another area level. Again, as the same process, I placed in the builds, then secured the area with iron bars, and extended the bottom platform with upcoming move. But I noticed that there were no guiding layouts, so in order to make one, I needed to build the other side of the foundation, so I got right into work. I began making the stairs and the iron border bars. 
I then got into the game to see what I want between each platform. Along with that, since I needed these structures aligned, and after making the majority of the large structure over at the asset area, I began polishing the building with an additional balcony, extended walls, and more depth in the overall build, while along placing the spire buildings in two. After readjusting the foundation's offset and adding more design into the walls, I then began making the interior of the large structure for the finish. Here, before going further, I also made the structure between the stairs and the bridge. It's very interesting because the structure helps occlude the player's vision with the same you're still in the center of the city vibe. And it gives a good sense of massive scaleness of Yarnum. Anyways, going back to the topic, I then duplicate the structure to the ass area to make more variance of it, along shifting to my next state. With that done, I also move to the central city to finish some areas. I begin making the platform using iron bars. I then expand the foundation and place the structures while also changing around the level heights along with narrow pathways. After a while, I decided to get in game. I then realized that I needed that structure. That one. It, it's difficult to get a view of the structure from here, but if you turn your hunter left, you can see that there's the exact same structure position there. So I began my planning. In game, you can't really tell much of the details, but it gives a good idea of the depth and distance where the structure is positioned at. I also wanted to study its features and design, so I got into the map viewer. I started off checking the amount of windows, pilasters, pinnacles, and each divided sections, while also taking my time to study how they made their models and textures. I then compared the scale with other structures to get the closest idea of how many blocks will it take. After getting a grasp of it, I got right into building by starting off making the platform. I then made the windows and the pilasters separating each section. After the bottom, I worked towards the top focusing where the pinnacles and the pinnacles are placed and the length of the whimper, while also keeping the windows larger than the ones below. I then finished the structure with an oval shaped roof and with a steeple on top. I continued to place in other structures with changing some shapes to make the group position perfectly. After that, I also began making each platform where the structure will stand, as well as working on the stairs. I then proceeded to connect the lower and higher layers with a slab staircase, while placing the iron fences finishing up the other staircase. Going back to Bloodborne, here I want to see the positioning of each structure, along how much space I want it to use. After starting the game, I went back to Minecraft to begin to work. I started off shaping out the shortcut area, along placing iron fences at the same time, while also making a cylinder section with stairs connected on both sides. Along with that, to reheat my motivation that day, I placed some light sources and duped the left area to the right. After placing in the structure where an NPC resides, I moved to the asset area to work on this house. I really like how I finished off this build. My intention when making this was front side with windows on the same height, the gargoyle shaped spouts and the decorations in between the walls. After placing in the house, I then began doing the same with other structures while adjusting some in the process. Long finishing the upper level, I decided to design the sewer walls for the first end mark. Anywho, I got into work starting from polishing the upper section. I then soon changed the surface materials with bricks and stacked the pilasters with the decorative niche in between. After a bit, I finished the walls with stacking parts and reworks. Along with that, I then proceeded to place in tree models in the central section while also making a gate, which functions as route for the next shortcut. To finish the overall work of Central City, 
I got on with making the iron gates. In game, I took a good time studying its features along getting the idea of how depth and light it reflects on that metallic material. I then got into modeling starting from the bars coloring and shaping along adding light reflections. I've been careful of characterizing each part since that'll help emphasize the look. Along with doing the design, I was now able to design what I wanted, so from that, I went berserk. First darkening parts of sections, then once that's done, lighten areas that has a reflective element with a brighter color. After a while of work, I was able to get the perfect texturing. After that, I moved on placing the models in. Heading to the center of the map. Map. Wait, hold on. Let's not do that. Let's. Okay. Here. Boom. Now we have all the areas visible instead of me specifying each part of the map by saying bottom map area or central area. No one can keep track of that. Let's go with this. Anyways, back to the rail. Heading to number one. I tackled into making a new pathway through the city. I began to place in the assets I've made aside fixing wrong models. With that done, I started the process of shaping and designing the levels along placing structures and polishing. I also made some stairs that connect to the upper level which leads players into this small alley. I wanted to place in the tree models, so I went back to 2 and 4 and began placing while along polishing every section that I came in sight. Before we head on, I wanted to make the background structures since that will make the city more like a mountainous gothic city on top of each other. So I started building the platform roughly, then detailed the exterior walls. After a while, I carefully placed the structures, then finished smoothing the walls along with other unfinished sections to complete half of the area. It is now time to finish the exterior of Yosefko's clinic. In the asset area, after rechanging some designs of the structure, I begin placing in the map to further complete the overall layout of number 4. After a moment, I then duplicate the structure, and while changing and readjusting parts, I then moved on building the structure in between by making a box, then proceeded to texture the walls and the roof. Along doing so, using this model as a railing didn't really fit my idealness. So I decided to just make them. By using a stair block state, we can add a ton of conditions. I made it so it has top and bottom state, along with having a curved state as well. The result was great in design and functionality. With the platform done, I then copied the tower along changing the design elements. While polishing, I also modeled some chimneys to finish up the rooftop. Also, I had in mind to make another part of the clinic, but for now, that will carry on to the next chapter. Therefore, to finish up the exterior, I worked on the tail by adding a curved roof, temporal interior, and a window section to finish up the clinic for now. Moving on to the next area, number one. I wanted to walk through the sewers, so from that, I got right into work. After opening a large hole, I started off making the main platform above the sewage. Making the buttress models for the sewer walls amplified the mood of the atmosphere and also provided me the information of how the scale will be for each wall piece. Here we can see that when the model's in an individual state, could look a little bit off, but that's the trick. Once you combine it with another one, or with a different model, it changes its world completely. From that, getting to Minecraft, you can see how it works and functions as an element. I wanted the buttress to be a diagonal shape, along making sure it doesn't feel weird in game, so I made the textures to be relative on the same height with the flat walls. Also for decoration, I added the messenger shaped spouts and the pipes on every interval space. With the idea in mind, I want to show you how the planning works in Bloodborne first. Climbing down the ladders, we can see how the sewer shape kind of bends on the left side. In the map viewer, we can see how it looks in a specific shape. I really wanted to make the length of the sewers and the height of it feel like the actual game, so from that, I had my focus on the layouts. Anywho, going back to Minecraft, after making multiple shapes for the tunnel, I then continued to place it in. From that, I was able to expand the sewers length. With the layout done, I then got into designing the entire walkway. Since the custom models could make the visual messy, my intention was to make the pathway clear as possible. So to do so, I did my best to make the tunnel shape not too curved with one block spacing. But before that, I needed the insight of how wood texturing works in pixel art. So after doing some research, I stumbled onto this page, Wood Grain, written by Rachel Pixels. The tutorial was well explained and detailed and had many tips of how to texture in various ways. 
This also includes color palette and use, with crucial information for Pixar and more. I want to send a big shout out to Rachel on Twitter because the tutorial this person made literally works. It's also how I was able to make this work in an instant. So if you want to be an update with Pixar community and increase your insight, maybe follow Rachel. Anyways, with the required insight, I was able to make the logs and many variants. Understanding the wave of texturing, I also added the green rotten moss and some white spots, which I think are bird shit? Anywho, at the end it worked like a charm. I'm really impressed how it came out. After making some arches and placing in the logs, I also made the bridge while decorating other sections to temporarily finish the underground. Heading to the open sewers, since I've adjusted the scale of the bridge, I was able to polish the details. Along that, I finished the area by shaping the entrance to the bridge sewer section and added more quality. To get a good grasp of how the height will be for the underground, I began working on the wall design using the custom models. I then proceeded to spread the wall parts while going for a different approach for the leveling by adding different heights. I then finished off the work by designing the entrance and adding the gate along placing the ladders. Also, around the middle of the sewers, the hunter will encounter a man-eating boar, which is a great spot to visit pigs. Anyways, with all the previous work done, I once again got into Bloodborne. I wanted to take a good look of how the scale will be and what elements does it contain as a structure. So with a little bit of spectating, I got along deciding what part to start off. With that zooming into the bad relief, first I put my focus on to recreate the grid patterns, then designing the inner details. After some planning, I got into texturing. When doing designing in a vanilla theme, I always make models flat and simple. Doing so not only makes the visual appealing in vanilla design, but also saves a lot of geometric space and memory, in other words, reduces lag. From that, I focused on how the light reflects and the depth in each part. Since this is a one pixel scale, I also was careful to not make the details too in depth and complex. This will distract attention from other already minor lit drawn elements, so I decided to make every divided section element simple and balanced with along making the flat open parts complex. After making a few models, I got into Minecraft to start the work. I began with the base layout, then proceeded to place in the pilasters below the entablature. After finishing the bow relief and the arch below, I then placed in the iron gates along working my way towards the top section. Adding the trefoil design spandrels and finishing the top part of the structure, I also made a segmental pediment with angelic beams on both sides and a berserk reference in the center. After placing pedestals and all the components of the gate, it is now complete. Just for a final touch, I also temporarily made the foundation of the cathedral wards so that I can make the closed gate. To get a decent look of the gate, I got into Bloodborne AGAIN. Yes, I totally forgot to do this one. Anyways, when I was studying its features, I immediately realized that the overall design they were using had similar elements like the other gates where the Yarnamites gathered. After some spectating, I began the work starting from texturing the model. Here, instead of recreating the gate texture entirely, I had an idea. I wanted to make some cool designs by using the hunter's mark, along matching the scale of the model. Since this is a metallic material, the pixels will have great shading. So when texturing, I had my focus on separating dark and bright sections along having a tent in between. After finishing it, I replaced acacia wood and brown glazed terracotta for the custom models, then proceeded to place every element to complete the gate. With that, here is Bloodborne in Minecraft. We are born of the blood. Made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood.
I hope you're excited to see where this beautiful project will take us, and most importantly, to get the world down so you can play it yourself. I also want to shout out to the amazing people who supports me on Patreon. Meme Man, LOL, R Stare, High Bond, Much El Mott, Hank Whittington, US Navy 2008. With all, I really appreciate your support. From here, we'll see how the torch will carry itself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.